Hello everyone, this is chapter 5, Linear Models and Matrix Algebra, part 2. So the last topic of chapter 4 is the um, inverse matrix. Right? And we talk about the singularity and the non-singularity of a matrix. So here um, we continue chapter 4 and it talks more about the conditions for non-singularity of a matrix. So first is a review. Non-singularity means that the inverse matrix exists, or A inverse exists. And singularity means there's no inverse matrix of matrix A. So <clears throat> when we talk about um, the inverse matrix, we say that if A has an inverse matrix A inverse, then both A and A inverse are square matrix. So they have to be n by n of dimension. Right. But actually the square matrix condition is a necessary but not sufficient condition for the existence of A inverse. So that means that if you want to make sure that A inverse or the inverse matrix exists, um, you must need uh, other conditions to satisfy that. So we need an, another condition other than the square matrix condition to make sure that A inverse exists. And so here first, let's talk about some of the background. So first we need to know what is necessary and what is a sufficient condition in order to understand this sentence. So let's assume that P and Q are two statements. You can think of the P and Q are two sentences. Right? So case one, if from P we can know Q, so there's a um, um, right arrow here showing that if P, uh, if P is true, then Q is also true. Or from P, we can know Q, or P can imply Q. Right? If this is true, then we write a sign as a, um, as a left, uh, right pointing arrow here. So P from P, we can know Q. Right? So if this is the case, then Q is called the necessary condition for P, and P is called the sufficient condition for Q. So let's give, uh, let me give you an example. So if the statement P is, she is a mother, right? This is a statement, a sentence. And the Q is, she is female. So we know that if she's a mother, then she has to be a female, right? But if she's a female, then she doesn't have have to be a mother. So from P, we can know that Q must hold, right? If she's a mother, then she has to be female. But from Q, we don't know P, right? Q is not necessarily to imply P, right? If she is female, then maybe she's a mother and maybe not. So if, if P holds or if P is, if Q, sorry, if Q is true, we don't know if P is true or not. But if P is true, then we know that Q must be true. So this is the relationship between these two sentences. right? So we can write that P implies Q. Or if P holds, then Q have to hold. Right? So Q is called the necessary condition for P. The P is called the sufficient condition for Q. So the square matrix is necessary but not sufficient for the existence of A inverse. So that means that if A inverse exists, so we know that it has to be a square matrix. But if A is a square matrix, then it doesn't necessarily imply that uh, A inverse exists. 
right? So this is their condition. This is their uh, relationship. So case two, if um, if Q if P can imply Q, and also Q can imply P, right? They can both imply each other. So Q is both necessary and sufficient condition for P. And if this is the case, then we use a double arrow here, double pointing arrow here to show the relationship. So we read this sentence as P if and only if Q. Right. So let me give you an example. If P, the sentence is all the three sides of a triangle are equal. We know that this is the definition of the um, equilateral triangle, right? And Q is all the three internal angles of a triangle are each 60 degree. We know that there's another definition of the equilateral uh, triangle. So from P, we can know that Q holds, right? Because both of the sentences are the definitions of the equilateral triangle. So if one of them holds, then the other one should also hold, right? So these two are equal to each other. So from P, if the three sides of a triangle are equal to each other, then we know that all the three internal angles of a triangle are each 60 degrees. So from P, we can know that Q must hold. And from Q, we can also know that P must hold. Right, because from Q, we know that this triangle is equilateral. So if the triangle is equilateral, then the three sides of a triangle are equal to each other. So from Q, we can also know P. So we can write uh, the relationship between the two sentences as P if and only if Q, or Q if and only if P. So it means that um, P can imply Q and Q can imply P. So we read this as if and only if, you know, P if and only if Q. So what we want to find is another condition such that another condition plus the square matrix condition can imply the existence of in A inverse, right? And uh, the relationship between the two conditions and the existence of A inverse is the if and only if. Um, if and only if relationship. Right. So we want to find another condition such that they can imply each other. Okay, see so some background. And here we talk about the conditions here. So, <clears throat> Suppose we want to solve the linear equation system. As I said last time in chapter four, um, in this equation, A is called the coefficient matrix. And X is the variable matrix. And D is the constant term, right? the constant uh, matrix. And we can um, write the linear equation system as the three um, parts together. So coefficient matrix times a variable equals to a constant vector. So our goal here, our goal here is to solve X. We want to find out what is X, right? Because X is a variable matrix we want to find. And all the coefficient and constant unknown to us, but x is unknown, so we want to solve x. And in order to solve that, so this is our equation, right? We want to find what is x. And we do this by first uh, pre-multiplying a inverse on both sides of the equation. So a inverse times ax equals to a inverse times d, right? We just uh, pre-multiply a inverse um, before uh, on both sides of the equation because ax equals to d. 
so this equation should also equal to the right hand side, right? And because A inverse times A is just the identity matrix, right? Because uh, any matrix is called this B, right? Any matrix times its inverse should equal to um, the identity matrix, right? That's the definition of the inverse matrix. So for the right, uh, left hand side, it's just the X. For the right hand side, it should be A inverse times D. Right, so this is the solution to the x. If we want to know the unknown matrix x, we have to find out the inverse of a. Right, because d is given, is a constant vector, but a inverse is something we need to know. So this is why we have to find out um, the inverse of a, and in order to find out, we need to know what kind of matrices have the inverse. Or, or um, what kind of conditions for A to be to have an inverse matrix? Right? And if solution X is unique, then A inverse should exist. Otherwise, there's no solution for X because you cannot find the inverse matrix of A. Right? <clears throat> as long as the inverse of A exists, then we can find the solution of X using this equation. So here is the details of the conditions of non-singularity. So let me re review that non-singularity means A inverse exists. And it needs two uh, conditions to satisfy this sentence. So first we call the squareness, or A is a square matrix. So we already know that, right? But squareness alone cannot imply non-singularity. We need another condition called linear independence in order to satisfy, in order to imply the non-singularity. So linear independence means the rows of matrix A of matrix A are linearly independent. So this is a new condition we need to add. Um, besides, uh, we need to add. Um, to the squareness. So if we meet the two conditions, then the two conditions can imply non-singularity. And non-singularity can imply the two conditions. So this sign is called if and only if, right? We just talked about that. So we already know, we already know the squareness, right? And now I'll talk about what is the linear independence. Okay, so Suppose the coefficient matrix is like this. So A is a coefficient matrix. And uh, we know that this um, uh, A inverse exists. So A has to be a square matrix. Right? So A, suppose A is n by n matrix, a square matrix. And the coefficient, the elements in A is from A11 to A and n. It's a huge square, and each row and each column has n elements, and it's from a11 to a and n. And for each row, for each row, we can rewrite each row as v1 prime, v2 prime to vn prime. Right. So we can't v1, v2 to vn prime to row vector because each vi prime represents one row of matrix A. Right. So vi prime equals to a i1 to a i m. So for example, v1 prime equals to a11, a12, a1n, right? The first row. The first row, this is the second row, and then this is the last row. Right? So V3 um, prime, for example, just A31, A32, and then A3n. Right? We write a prime here, we write a prime here, uh, because this is a transpose of a vector. 
So mm, people usually write the vector as a uh, column vector right here, like this. But here we want to write a uh, row vector. So we need to add a prime sign here to make them a row vector, right? The transpose. So v1 prime just a transpose of v1. So we write the transpose here just because people usually um, want to, when they write a the vector here, they, they just use a column vector here to represent the, the vector. So you want to transfer the column vector to the row vector, they need to add a transpose sign here. Uh, anyway, just a notation, <clears throat> just a notation, not the important part. So anyway, so each v1, uh, each vi prime represents a row vector of A. Okay, so there's a background. And a linear row independence requires that the only set of scalars ki which can satisfy the vector equation the summation of ki vi prime and i i is from 1 to n equals to no matrix so if ki satisfy the vector equation then the only solution to ki is ki equals to 0 for all i So what does it mean? Let me give you an example to show this. Right. So for example, if A matrix is 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 0, 4, 7, 2, 4, 6, and we can write A as V1 prime, V2 prime, and V3 prime. Right. So V1 prime is just um, 1, 2, 3. And v2 prime equals to 0, 4, 7. Right? v3 prime equals to 2, 4, 6. Right. So we can notice that um, there's some relationship between v1 prime and v3 prime, these two. Right. So we find that, okay, if we multiply the number 2, to all the elements of v1 prime. And we can find the result is just a v3 prime. Right, so 2 times 1, 2, 3 is just 2, 4, 6. Right, so this is v1 prime and this is v3 prime. So that means that there's a linear relation between v1 prime and v3 prime. Right, so v3 prime is 2, 4, 6, is 2 times the 1, 2, 3, or 2 times v1 prime. So this is a relation. So we can represent v3 prime as 2 v1 prime. Right, so this is called a linear, um, a linear relation between the two row vectors. And we can also write 2 times v n prime as 2 times v i v1 prime plus a no matrix oh sorry plus uh, 0 right this is 0 0 I should write it's a scalar 0 a number 0 times v2 prime right because 0 times anything is just uh, 0 0 0 right 0 times 0 4 7 is just a 0 0 0 so anything or any row vector plus 0, 0, 0, it's just uh, the row vector itself. So if we add um, this term, it won't affect the first equation, right? It still holds. So here we can see clearly the relationship between the three um, row vectors. It's this one, 2 times v1 prime plus 0, times v2 prime and the minus v3 prime equals to a null matrix. Right here is just a 2 times v1 prime is 1, 2, 3, right, plus 0 times um, v2 prime is 0, 4, 7. 
minus v3 prime is 2, 4, 6. Right. Actually, if we move the minus v3 prime to the right hand side, we can, we can know exactly uh, this equation here, right? v3 prime equals to 2 of v1 prime plus 0 times v2 prime. We just move the v3 prime to the right hand side from the first equation here. Okay, so this is zero vector or no matrix zero 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 here, right? Okay. So the definition here means that the only set of scalars ki which can satisfy the vector equation is ki equals to zero. But here we can see that if we expand this. Right, if we expand this summation here, it should be k1 v1 prime plus k2, sorry, v2 prime plus k3 v3 prime equals to a no matrix. Right, because we have only three variables here, uh, uh, three row vectors here, so k should be at the most k3. Okay. So here we can see that k1 is 2, k2 is 0, and k3 is minus 1. Right. So we said that, okay, the only set of scalars ki which can satisfy this equation should be k1 equals to k2 equals to k3 equals to 0. Right? Only in this case, we can say that they are linearly independent. But here, we can see that there's another equation that can also satisfy this equation here, which is if we let k1 equals to 2, k2 equals to 0, k3 equals to minus 1, then we, we also have this equation, right? The summation of the three terms equals to zero, equals to no matrix, right? Because this is what we find by, um, by simply notice the relationship between V1 prime and V3 prime here. So, so we, if, if this is the case, then we say that, okay, V1, V2, V3 prime are not linearly independent. Or we say that they are linearly dependent from each other, right? Because linearly dependent means that for V3, for example, we can represent V3 with V1, right? So we don't need the V3, actually. We just need V1 in order to represent V3. So in this case, we say that they are linearly dependent. And if it's linearly independent, so we have to know what we have to. So the only solution to this equation should be k1 and k2 and k3, all of them are zero. So for example, if a is 1, 2, 3, 0, 4, 7, um, 2, 4, 8, uh, sorry, 2, 4, 2, 4, 8, right? For example, I change the number from 6 to 8. So here we can see that this is a v1 prime, v2 prime, v3 prime, right? We can see that there's no scalar k such that when we multiply k um, for, for uh, any vector here, then we can get another vector. Right? So for example, if we multiply 2 by 1, 2, 3, we get 2, 4, 6 not 2, 4, 8, not V3 prime, right, it's not V3 prime. So we cannot find a vector, sorry, we cannot find a scalar k such that if we multiply all the elements in the row vector with the scalar k, then we can get another row vector. We cannot find this kind of relation between um, the three row vectors here, right? So in this case, if we want to find out k1, k2, and k3, 
such that this equation holds such that this equation holds right because there's no linear relationship between any of the two vectors here so we cannot find the k to satisfy this equation um, besides zero right so this is called linearly independent right in this case we say that the three row vectors of a are linearly independent because we cannot find a uh, number k such that if we multiply all the elements in any of the row vector here and the result is another row vector right we cannot find this kind of relationship so in this case this a is called linearly independent but this a here in the example is called linearly dependent okay so what if the rows are linearly dependent, right? What's the what's the like what's the problem of that? So the problem is that one row is actually redundant if they are linearly dependent. Right? So for example, as I said, we want to find out um, the solution to ax equals to d. Right? So if we write out a times x then it should be as this, right? So, so A here, it is an example. The first line of A is one, two, three. And X is X1, X2, and X3, right? If we multiply the first row and the column of X, we should get X1 plus two X2 plus 3x3 equals to d1, right? So if you don't understand, let me write things here. a equals to um, 1, 2, 3, 0, 4, 7, 2, 4, 6. x is x1, x2, x3, and these are the three variables we need to solve. d equals to Three constants d1, d2, and d3, they're just constants. So, so we want to find out ax equals to the equals to d, the solution to x here. Right? So if we multiply a and x, we see that we, we need to first multiply the first row and the first column, which is the only column of x, right? So this should be 1 times x1 plus 2 times x2 plus 3 times x3 equals to d1, right, the first um, element here. And if we multiply the second row with the first column, it should be 0 times x1 plus 4 times x2 plus 7 x3, that's d2. Yeah, we need to expand um, this equation as the um, original one. Right? So the three, the third one is 2x1, 4x2, 6x3 equals to d3. But the problem is that because the v1 prime and v3 prime has a linear relation, so that means that from equation one, we can know equation three, right? From x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 equals to d1, we should know that, okay, 2x1 plus 4x2 plus 6x3 should be d3. And d3 should just be 2 of d1, right? Since the two equation holds. So that means that the three equation here are downgraded to only two equations, right? Because we don't need a third one. We don't need a third one because from the first one, from the first equation, we should already know the result of the third equation, right? So if we want to solve the linear 
equation system, actually we don't need this equation because it's redundant, right? So we have only two equations left, the first one and the second one. But we know that here we have three variables, x1, x2, x3. But we only have two equations. So that means that we cannot find the solution or unique solution to x1, x2, and x3. Because we have three variables here to solve. And the least number, the smallest number of equations, unique equations we need to use to find out the solution to all x1, x2, and x3 are three equations. So we need at least three equations to solve x1, x2, and x3. Right. Because we have three variables, so we need at least the same number of unique equations to solve for x1, x2, and x3, the three variables. But here we only have two equations. So that's not enough to solve for the unique x1, x1, x3. So that means that we can now find a unique solution. If it's only two equations, so there's no unique solution for the x vector or for x1, x2, and x3. So that's why we have to make sure that all the rows of the coefficient matrix uh, are linearly independent. Right? Otherwise, we cannot find a unique solution of x. Right? But our goal is to find x, so we need to make sure that A has linearly independent um, rows. Right? So that's why if we want to solve uh, this equation, as I said, we need to rearrange that and find out, okay, x is this. So if x has a unique solution, then that means that, okay, a should have the inverse, and a has to be first square matrix, and second, all the rows are linearly independent of a. Otherwise, there's no unique solution to x. So that's why we add another condition, the second condition, to the non-singularity condition of A, just to make sure that we had to, uh, there's always a um, solution or a unique solution for the X variables. Okay, so here's a summary right here, it's just, uh, um, there are two conditions that we need to use uh, to make sure that A inverse exists, the first is squareness, the second is that all the rows of A are linearly independent. Right? And linearly independent just means that there's no linear relationship between any of the two rows of A. Like if V3, if V3 prime equals to 2 V1 prime, like the example here, that means that there are linear relationship, linear relationship between the two rows of A. So in this case, we said that, okay, A is not linearly independent. So there's no unique solution for X. But if A is a matrix uh, like this, if a matrix like this, we cannot find any of the relationship uh, between any of the two vectors here. So in this case, we said that, okay, A has a, it has a inverse and uh, the solution of X exists. Right, because if we want to find out the solution of x, we have to take the inverse of a here. So we have to make sure that the inverse of a exists. Okay.